They're able to remember the excruciating details of parental rape. Thank you very much for joining us. All of our guests today... Whether or not the stories are true or false seems to matter little to that army of television, sob sisters, and brothers. The more bizarre the confession, the more airtime you get. Followers of Satan, victims of sexually aggressive aliens. Uh, our reptilian creature um, was in my bedroom and just performed a right... Dr. Elizabeth Loftus has been researching memory for 20 years. People are remembering sexual abuse in ways that is absolutely impossible. Being, a, being abused in the womb, being abused in a prior life, being abused uh, by uh, an alien who's abducted you and done it on a UFO. Dr. Loftus says memory is one of the trickiest aspects of the human condition. It doesn't work like a videotape. We don't just record it and play it back later. We take bits and pieces of our experience and combine them together. We essentially construct our memories, and that's why we can't always trust it. Dr. Loftus says some of the techniques used to recover memory are suspect. Hypnotic drugs like sodium amytol, something called guided imagery and hypnosis. These, she says, can induce false memories, as in the case of the allegations that Cardinal Bernardin of Chicago had sexually molested a young student named Stephen Cook. But you're sure it was the Cardinal? Yes. Absolutely, there's no question. I now realize that the memories which arose during and after the hypnosis are unreliable. His recantation heated up the debate in the psychiatric community on whether repressed memories even exist. If you look at the studies, for example, of children who have witnessed their parents be murdered in front of them, or witness their mothers be raped in front of them. The problem these kids have is they can't get this out of their mind. They have intrusive thoughts, uh, they think about it all the time, so they have the opposite problem. Dr. Paul McHugh, director of the Johns Hopkins Department of Psychiatry, says the recovered memory therapists are playing a dangerous game. The discoveries that uh, are being made now are suspect discoveries and they are harming patients by giving them an artificial reason for their troubles and not the correct one. People believe that no one could dream up such a horrific thing if it wasn't true. But in point of fact, that's just what it is. It is a nightmare and nightmares are worst fears imagined. But America is fertile soil for diseases, conditions, and therapies of the weak. Especially therapies that encourage patients to think that all their troubles are the fault of their parents. Jerry and Helen Barr are the most famous accused molesters in the country. In 1991, their daughter Roseanne dropped a bombshell on them. I was very, very much an abused child, and so was Tom. I was going to ask Tom, yeah. But uh, I didn't remember any of it till two years ago. That's fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. During therapy, she'd recovered memories of incest. People magazine called it Roseanne's brave confession. Her family called it a vicious fabrication. When you get hit with an allegation that you're a, a, a pervert and a sexual molester, what do you do? How would anybody react? Roseanne's parents took lie detector tests. They passed but that did not convince Roseanne. I mean, everyone knows that you have to have a conscience and feel some guilt to fail one. And they have never had either. Now, three years later, a surgically reconstructed Roseanne continues the accusations as she hustles her new book, My Lies. Thanks, Roseanne. Very, very much. Her family, parents, sisters Geraldine and Stephanie, and brother Ben, for the first time, respond publicly. Are you convinced that your parents did not abuse Roseanne? From the way we lived, the house that we grew up in, it's really hard to see how it could have happened. Um, there wasn't a lot of privacy. I just do not believe the intent existed in my father or my mother. I don't believe that there was a, a sexual abuse that occurred in my family. I just, I don't believe that that happened, and I don't believe I'm in denial. What she is doing to five of us is really unfair, and just because it's on television and it's said by Roseanne 
doesn't mean it's true. Life in the Barr family, they all confess, was no picnic. Six people crammed into a tiny house. A father with a wild sense of humor, but a short temper, who admits that he sometimes acted like a slob. They accuse Roseanne of distorting gross behavior into criminal abuse. The way she takes kernels of truth and twists them into something really uncomfortable is, like she said, my dad would lie around the house and, you know, masturbate, when in reality, he would scratch watching TV. I got a call from my little sister, who was 17 at the time. Her name's Stephanie, and she said, you have to help me. Daddy put his hand down my pants, and uh, he molested me. It's embarrassing to say, but my dad never put his hands in my pants. There was no incest, and there was no molestation. Stephanie says what really happened was she had a terrible fight with her father that became physical. And he pinned me down. And I made the mistake of thinking that my sister had my best intentions at heart. And when I spoke to her, I said, I felt afraid and I didn't like that. And she told me, that was incest, that was molestation. And I said, no, I don't think that's what it was. Yes, it was, and if you don't come out of your denial, you will never get better. And I said, well, I don't like how I felt, but I didn't feel that. Roseanne went further, claimed that at her wedding to Tom Arnold, celebrated by Life magazine, her father, Jerry, molested her daughter, his grandchild. And then my children asked me, Dad, did you pinch her on the tush? And I said, I can't recall, but knowing me, probably. Probably. My parents are guilty of being tushy touchers. They yeah. are. Pats on the bottom. Absolutely. And that, I believe, is the genesis of a lot of Roseanne's claims. And I think, and however, as tushy touchers, that the punishment should match the crime. Whatever went on, there is one confession Roseanne made to Sally Jesse Raphael that defies logic and science. Uh, I have my first memory of uh, being molested by my mother at six months old. Those are the kinds of memories that we can be very sure are false memories, and they presumably are induced memories. We cannot trust memories before age three, uh, and really up till age four or five even our memories for things of that sort, uh, of any sort, are, are, are very hazy. Few psychiatrists would disagree with Dr. McHugh on that, but there are a number who do believe in repressed and recovered memory. Complicating things are a slew of therapists with questionable credentials. In at least 28 states and the District of Columbia, no license is required. And there are the self-help and how-to books. One of the Bibles of repressed memory is Secret Survivors by E. Sue Bloom, a licensed New York social worker. Her book provides a handy checklist of 34 symptoms. Her critics say the checklist is a grab bag of physical and emotional ailments that could apply to most anyone. She says if you have a majority of these symptoms, you're likely to be an incest survivor. The therapy and psychiatry in this country has a long history of embracing and rejecting fads. They also have a long history of embracing and denying the possibility of incest. But to what extent is your kind of therapy a uh, therapy du jour, I wonder? I help people to clarify what they feel. I help people to clarify their inner truth and their life experience. But you help them to clarify this with a very, very strong mindset of your own going in. Yes, that incest exists. That's my mindset. That a particular person, even no, if I'm totally in my even heart... likely. Even, oh, okay. You want to call that bias? That I think incest is likely? Okay, I'm biased. If you want to tell me I'm biased because I think incest is likely, and if you want to overlook all of the research that says how common it is, okay, I'm biased. Sometimes recovered memories, memories that are recovered in therapy, uh, involve <coughs> satanic abuse. That's correct. Abuse, that is correct. Which involves, according to some memories, eating of babies. That's correct. And drinking of blood. And you believe it? Yes, I believe it. Dr. McHugh says before believing anything, a therapist must check out every...